Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome to my channel, Created by Rebecca. In this week's video we're going to be having a look at the Portable Painter palette and choosing lots of yummy colours to put in it. Let's get started. This is my Portable Painter palette. I got it for Christmas this year and it started its life as an Indiegogo Kickstarter project. This is the second iteration and it's had a few modifications made to it. The idea is that you can use it for plein air painting. It's incredibly compact and it has lots of little features that make it even more useful. Here by comparison is my phone. It is the Samsung Galaxy 20 FE and you can see that it is smaller than that chunkier, yes, or mine's in a huge urban army gear case so that if I drop it I don't crack the screen again. When you take it out of the box you're presented with this grey case with a silver logo and a rubberized band which also has the portable painter logo on it. The silver part slides off and allows you to separate these two pieces of grey casework and that reveals the palette inside. If you open it up, on one side you've got smaller mixing wells and on the other side you have slightly larger ones. You have 12 half pan sized wells that you can either fill directly or it comes supplied with the half pans and they have a sticky dot on the back that just keeps them secured. I really struggled to get mine out the first time. I believe in the first iteration they didn't have any sticky dots, these are reusable sticky dots and the comments that came back were that the pans just rattled around and didn't feel very secure so that was their really easy fix for that. This is one of my Winsor & Newton Cotman half pans and they fit perfectly so if you wanted to you could get Winsor & Newton half pans and just use that to fill this set. I did also buy a pack of empty half pans from Ken Bromley Art Supplies here in the UK but they don't fit and as you can see it, um, it sits up a bit proud, the dimensions are different, they are a touch taller than the Cotman ones but I, you can see I've just sat these bottom to bottom and they are a fair bit wider, significantly too wide to actually fit in here snugly. You can see I've got some colours in here already. My intention for this is that it will be exclusively my professional watercolours rather than the Winsor & Newton Cotman which are more of a student grade. So I'm going to be using Winsor & Newton professional watercolours and also some Daniel Smith and potentially some Schmincke Horodam super granulating haze colours but I haven't quite decided on that yet. One of the things that makes this palette really super practical for taking out on plein air is that these water cups slide in. Now I wasn't sure, I thought maybe they clipped on somehow but they don't. You very definitely have to slide them on and that creates you a really stable little setup. You can use it just like this flat on a table but the intention is that you could actually sit it on your knee and work with it completely hands free. These two can either be used as water pots or you can put brushes and so on in there. And also the rubberized strap lets you 
hold brushes quite securely and you can also use this to keep your clip safe. The clip is what keeps the whole palette and the pots together securely and I believe in the first iteration there wasn't anything to stop you putting your little clip down somewhere and losing it but you can just tuck it into the band like that and it will keep it secure while you're working and you can still put your brushes in. The cups also have these shaped cutouts on each side and that allows you to very securely lay a paintbrush across. Maybe you just you've loaded it, you just need to do something and you just want to pop it down for a sec. My biggest dilemma with this is is 12 colours enough for me? I started my watercolour life with just a small set of Windsor and Newton Cotman colours and I've gradually expanded up to the full 38 colours or something, 48 colours. This is my first watercolour palette. It's probably 30 something years old, as you can tell by the colour. It was once white. It's the Windsor Newton Cotman range and is 12 colours, but I have done a little sneaky something extra which you might just notice and we're going to do that in the portable painter as well. This does only have one side for mixing which can be quite limiting and I end up with extra things or constantly wiping the cells out so that I can remix other colours and then I think oh, I wish I still had that first colour. Although it's very handy for travel it doesn't have any way of holding it like a palette ring or something on the back that you can slip on your finger. It can be quite awkward to hold it and your sketchbook and your brushes and suddenly you've got too many things in your hands and it all falls over and yeah, spoils your painting day. So how was I going to get to 12 colours? This is my swatching things out playing with things sketchbook. It is watercolour paper but it is hot pressed so it's very flat and the pages aren't particularly thick so it buckles. It is just a playing in sketchbook. And there are lots of ways that you can potentially swatch out colours to work out what's going to be the best set of colours for what you intend to do with your particular palette. This is my colour chart that I've made for all 18 of the professional watercolours that I have in my collection. They are in tubes so that means that I can use them in multiple palettes. As you can see I can mix an awful lot of colours and I was quite careful when I bought just a few extra ones recently to make sure that I was trying to fill gaps that I might have in my palette and give myself as even a spread across the colour spectrum as I could. There's a couple of ways of doing this mixing chart. Some people will divide it diagonally. You have all the original colours flowing down the centre and they will do the mass tone or the full deep rich colour on this side and then they will dilute the colour right down and have a much paler version up on this half. What I've tried to do here is one of the other versions which is biasing the colour mix to one colour or the other and it depends on its position on the grid I do get myself a bit confused with this sometimes though, so it's not always perfect, but for example here I've got Daniel Smith's Rich Green Gold 
and I have mixed it here with Daniel Smith's Organic Vermilion. So if I follow across, this one is closer to the vermilion on the chart than it is to the rich green gold, so there is more vermilion in the mix. If we look in the other direction, the rich green gold and the organic vermilion, this mixture leans a little bit more towards the rich green gold. There's not an awful lot in it, but it helps show the diversity of the colours on your palette. Now I could analyse the mixes. I looked at here at the Windsor and Newton cadmium free yellow pale which I have at the top and look at how it has mixed with all the other potential colours. I might see that maybe something's just making the other colours look a bit sludgy and therefore maybe it doesn't really deserve a place amongst the 12 colours. But it depends on what you're planning to paint. I guess with this palette being portable and intended for plein air painting, the likelihood is that I'm going to use it out in nature or maybe if I'm feeling brave I might try and do some urban sketching. They obviously look a lot different when they're wet so you do have to wait for them to dry down completely before you make your decision. Some colours looked so intensely coloured, so so dark and rich, but actually once they dried back they were much more muted. Daniel Smith's Buff Titanium is an interesting colour, it's quite opaque and it's a bit like adding white to a watercolour, so it will change its nature and it does pastelise colours very prettily rather than trying to do it with water and just diluting the colour right back. But it may not be something I want to take up an entire half pan in my palette with. It's one of those colours that I probably won't use all the time. I actually think I've got some really lovely colours here and it's going to be nigh on impossible to choose the 12 that I want. But I might be able to decide from this chart which ones I want to fill an entire half pan with and which ones I might be able to do something slightly cheeky with. So the colours I went for are the Windsor & Newton Cadmium Free Yellow Pale, Windsor & Newton Cadmium Free Yellow Deep, we have a cooler and a warmer yellow. And then I absolutely adore Daniel Smith's Aussie Red Gold. I got the Daniel Smith dot card and from the moment I swatched this colour I thought I really, really, really want that. Then I got the Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow. Now that's an incredibly pushy colour. If you have a colour in your palette and then you go and add a drop of the Nickel Azo Yellow it will push the other colour away. It's quite incredible. Daniel Smith's Rich Green Gold I think is lovely. Daniel Smith's Perylene Green is a really muted dark green. It does dry back to an almost hazy colour so that intenseness softens as it dries. Windsor & Newton Cerulean Blue. Cerulean is um, considered the best colour for skies. I don't think I have any palettes with cerulean blue on it at all and I thought maybe I was missing a trick there so I decided to go ahead and, and order that one. I had a couple of other deeper blues but I hadn't got anything quite so vibrant. <laughs> you can barely read this one. This is Daniel Smith's In Danthron Blue. He's really deep and dark in its mass tone and then you can sort of get it to a granulating stage and it mixes beautifully. It makes some really luscious purples and 
really useful greens. Daniel Smith's Indigo is very useful as shadow and for adding mass to things. Daniel Smith's Thalo Turquoise, I just love this colour. Love it, love it, love it. With the Windsor and Newton Cadmium Free Yellow Pale, it makes this lime green. Then it almost fades to nothing in the yellow deep. We get a sort of olivey ochre colour. We get emeralds. We come through to slightly purpley, tealy colours. That's, that's it in its proper state. Mauves. It's incredibly useful. Daniel Smith's Organic Vermilion. I wanted to put um, a true red on the palette. The Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose I tend to use as my red primary. It really does mix some absolutely stunning colours. But I thought maybe I was missing a trick by not having an actual red on the palette. And if we compare the Organic Vermilion with the Quinacridone Rose you can see the difference that you get, the, the difference in vibrancy when you look at the oranges that you create. The Chronacrone Rose is obviously better at the purples, it makes a gorgeous teal colour, whereas here we become a bit more muted with the, the organic vermilion. And you can also get these beautiful sort of peachy colours up here when you mix it with buff titanium or that's French ochre. With the Chronacrone Rose they tend towards the more rosy, mauvey colours. So I think they both have a place. This is Daniel Smith Chronacrone Violet. Really surprising yellowy tones. Then it bullies the turquoise right down and turns it into a lovely lavender colour. Look at that dark rose colour. That's gorgeous. That's with the organic vermilion. I went for the Daniel Smith French ochre. I didn't want anything that I might have in another palette. It doesn't do an awful lot to the yellows. It just warms them a bit. It's possibly the colour I could do without. This is Daniel Smith's Rose of Ultramarine, which I adore. But it, again, does seem to be doing a very similar job, mainly to the Chronacridone Violet, which makes sense. They're incredibly similar. Quin Violet just doesn't granulate in quite the way that Rose of Ultramarine does. So maybe I would tend to use Rose of Ultramarine on its own as a, a convenience mix. Then down here we have Daniel Smith's Sepia, which mixes some really useful sort of concrete -y colours, mutes other colours and makes some beautiful browns. This is the Windsor & Newton Neutral Tint. This was recommended to me by Natasha Newton. I asked her if she had a favourite colour or mix that would make a really good dark colour instead of black, but that didn't mute right down once it was dry. Some colours I can mix and they look so luscious and black. Yes, I've got a really brilliant deep dark shadow colour. Perfect. And then it dries and it just goes a bit wishy-washy. <laughs> and she said why don't you try the neutral tint from Windsor & Newton Professional. It's her, one of her favourites. So I did and thank you very much and I didn't realise what a lovely mixing colour it would be. What pretty pretty tones it makes. So I have filled a few of my half pans, as you saw at the beginning. Now I haven't filled them all the way up. The reason for that is I like to buy 5mm tubes of colour and I like to be able to make them go as far as I can. 
I have multiple palettes on the go at once. I have my one in my desk drawer at work. I have my Big Windsor and Newton Cotton one, which also has a couple of Daniel Smith colours in it. I've got uh, two small ones like this. I've got this one and I've got a De La Rowney set, which I don't know where that came from. And it means that I've always got art supplies on hand wherever I am. I can be travelling with them or I can have them at, at, at my desk. I can, yeah, just if I need to do art, I can do art. So by using the tubes, it means I can spread them across lots of palettes without having to buy a full half pan. And you don't need to fill them all the way to the top. There's no reason to. I do like to write on the side what I've got in each pan and I'm just going to start carefully squeezing. These aren't brand new tubes, obviously I've been testing the colours. Sometimes they can come spurting out at a rate of knots, so you have to be a bit careful with them. And I've got a cocktail stick and I am just going to gently swirl it in the paint to try and make sure there are no air bubbles in there and then I'm going to leave that to set and then I like to just break or cut the tip off the cocktail stick so that I'm not accidentally contaminating colours You choose the colours that you want, that you think you would get the most use out of. I cannot recommend highly enough getting the dot cards for these professional ranges of colours. It's so hard to pick things from a printed colour chart to actually have dots of the colours that you can mess about with, swatch out, mix a little bit here and there. Um, I managed to make this chart on this side with the dot cards alone and there are options on here that I didn't buy or haven't used in my palette because I basically ruled them out by using the dot cards. So now you're probably wondering what on earth I'm going to do with these six other colours. Well, here is my cunning trick. This little palette comes with a double-ended travel brush, which I think I may have already lost and wouldn't have used anyway. I like to take my own brushes out with me. So that means this little section here, which remains at the same level as the other wells is empty. And as I have done with other palettes, I can squeeze in small amounts of other colours and that expands my colour range. So as I said, these are going to be the colours that I probably need less of because either they're very punchy, like the nickel as a yellow, or I'm going to use less, like the buff titanium. So now I've turned my 12 colour palette into an 18 colour palette, which gives me all of these colours and more if I make slightly different mixes. So the last thing to do is to make a little 
watercolour paper colour guide just to remind me what colours I have got in here in which positions and that will be my palette all filled. So I'm going to put the lid on and allow it to dry where dust can't get at it. The last little test I want to do is see how easy it is to get water out of these cups into a wastewater container because the last thing we want to do when we're out painting in nature is go and empty our wastewater into that landscape. Um, you know, these things contain chemicals, it's not right to pollute nature. So, you do have to bear that in mind when you go painting, that yes this may be very neat and tidy, but you are also going to need to take your own supply of water with you and be prepared to carry it back again. So I put some water in a bottle. Easy enough to add in. Then when we're done, carefully remove the ends. not a drop spilt. Brilliant! So there's my portable paints up all filled up and ready to go and here are all the colours swatched out nice and big. I might find them a bit heavy in the yellowy to goldy section but as we saw from the mixing chart I can mix an awful lot of colours from these. Right well that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube and until next time, bye!